What's up, YouTube? Mr. Porkchild back here with another video. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you like the video, hit thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Um, one of the things I was looking at over the last couple weeks um, is the Sudoku board and the different programs that are out there. If you just, uh, you can YouTube it or Google it, you'll see a whole bunch of different people have uh, have done their own version of um, Sudoku game. And, and like basically they'll go over, um, I've seen a couple different videos and usually they go over either like how to solve it or how to check to see if it's correct. Um, so after watching a whole bunch of different videos, I kind of took some things from here and there and made like a Frankenstein version of a Sudoku um, game inside of JavaFX. So I'll show you guys, I'll run it real quick and just kind of walk you through it. Uh, if you don't know what a Sudoku, if you don't know what Sudoku is, it's basically just a board that's usually um, nine by nine and it, it usually looks a little better than this and it's usually kind of pre-populated with more than just zeros. Um, but normally what you want, what your, the, the goal of the game is basically to fill all of these in with numbers one through nine and have none of the numbers repeating in any of the rows or the columns or these three, um, or these three smaller three by threes. So you should have basically like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the numbers one through nine in this row with no duplicates. And then the numbers one through nine in each column with no duplicates. And then the same thing, the numbers one through nine inside of these um, these smaller little squares here. And yeah, so if you do that and you get it all correct and you click on the checkboard, it'll tell you that it's correct. If you, you know, obviously don't want to take the time to do it, you can hit solve board and it'll go through and it'll actually put in numbers that satisfy um, those three constraints. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what I have set up right now. And then I have a reset button where it just puts it all back to zeros. Um, if I click the solve board and then I click this, it'll tell you like, Hey, you won. It works. Um, if you don't have it right, then I'll tell you, Hey, you lost. It's incorrect. Um, the one thing that's, uh, that's kind of strange the way that I have it set up now is it will basically... I mean, yeah, I, I guess I'll go through some of the code. So it's weird though for my solve board. My solve board looks for zeros because in traditional Sudoku, like I said, you're going to have pre populated numbers already in there that do work and you just got to fill in all the, the zeros around it. You got to fill in the numbers around those. So my solve board algorithm looks for zeros and then fills those in. So if you solve your board and there are no zeros and you change a number, so like if I change this to three, obviously that's not correct anymore. And you can check this and it'll tell you it's incorrect. But if you hit solve board, it doesn't actually populate that one because it never sees it because it's, there's the number there already. So that's something I'm looking to improve on in the future. I want to try to make this a little better, but for now I figured it was good enough to throw up there on YouTube. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description to my GitHub too, if you want to uh, follow this project or if you want to just take it as is now and mess around with it um yeah i mean for those uh <laughs> when we look through the code like you know don't don't judge me too harshly this is first of all i don't think this is even supposed to really happen in java fx or maybe there's a way better way to implement it and i'm just dumb who knows but i had to set up <laughs> 81 different text fields because that's what i use to put my numbers in so it's a little ridiculous and then to access all those text fields and to set them, I didn't want to have to obviously, you know, have 81 lines that said, you know, set to zero or whatever. So I put them all in a matrix and then I traverse that matrix and set them to zero for my reset button. And again, I think I could probably put all this in its own method somehow because I have it repeated throughout my code. This is not set up right. Like I'm going to improve it a lot, but for now it's somewhat functional. So I'm just going to show you guys. <laughs> And then um, here, this is kind of cool. So like this checkboard method is probably like the best piece of code that's in here. And I stole this from another YouTuber that stole it from some other guy on Stack Overflow. And if I can remember to find the video, I'll try to link it in my description so you guys can watch it too. But basically he showed a little trick where you can use a character value and strings 
and add them into a hash map in order to check your board, um, which is faster than having to do it um, any other way. So, yeah, anyway, that's that's how that works. Um, and then the cool thing about that, or the, the difficult thing about that, was when I went into my, my checkboard method, or when I implement my checkboard method, I have to basically turn my strings into characters. So I had to make like a character array or a character matrix first. And then I had to take, I had to take my text field, basically get the text, and then I could get a character at a certain index. So you can't really change a string into a character, obviously, but if you have a string, you can take one character from it. And because all my strings are just one character anyway, I know that the character I want is at index zero. So I just grab that character threw into my um, matrix here and then I use that matrix to basically um, as the parameter for my checkboard method and then if it's correct it'll give you a little um, little pop-up that says hey you won or if it's not I'll tell you, you lost and then my solve Sudoku method again this is most like all the stuff I pretty much took from other youtubers that were out there other people on the internet that I could find this is basically how I how you set it up to solve the board for you. Again, right here is where it's basically checking to see if it's a zero, and then it breaks out of the loop and it tries to solve for that, that missing piece. I need to try to figure out exactly how to run this so that I can that I can just go through every single every every single um, index in my matrix and just put the correct number and not care if it's a zero but I haven't got that far yet um, this is basically all it is right now that's everything my main is just exactly what they would give you when you start um, you know a general when you start a sample JavaFX project it's this is I didn't really touch this at all I just changed the name and then changed um, the resource so that's pretty much it. All of it is in this one class, my controller class. This class I'm actually not even using. Um, I just ended up throwing everything to my controller, so I could probably delete that. But like I said, um, <laughs> this was thrown together pretty quickly and is pretty messy, but I thought it was kind of cool and I wanted to show you guys. So let me know in the comments what you think and if you want to see more, um, more projects like this. Um, my next couple videos, I'm going to probably just stick with Java effects. I've done the most with that and then I can make some fun stuff out of that. So stay tuned for more and, uh, let me know what else you guys want to see.